our sins unto God, let us now recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let every person be subordinate to the higher authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been established by God. The most high rules of the kingdom of men, he gave it to whom he is Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, for will now and Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, for you rule over all nations. May we, who through baptism are heirs of your kingdom, always be worthy of your, our high calling. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Isaiah. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First of all, then, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgiving be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotions and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and come in knowledge of the truth. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord's throne is established in heaven. God's royal power rules over all. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, you know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles 
lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, disciples of the Lord, first of all, we celebrate on this Sunday, throughout the many denominations of Christianity, Heritage Sunday. Now, to understand what heritage is, we look at a simple definition. Heritage is defined as that which we have inherited. To understand our heritage, we go back to the Old Testament, where God established his covenant first with Father Abraham, who is considered a patriarch, not only in Judaism, in Christianity, but in Islam. And it centered about what God had said to Abraham. He said, I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and the kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of all your descendants after that. We continue with our heritage in the personage of Moses, what God had said to Moses. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, be careful to do all his commandments that I command unto you this day, the Lord will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, and the fruit of the ground, and the fruit of the cattle, the increase of your herds, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket, and your kneading bowl. You will be blessed when you come in, and be blessed when you go out. Throughout the entire Old Testament, we hear God again speaking of that which we were as his people, our inheritance. In the New Testament, we are reminded of our heritage as being Christians. In the first letter of Peter, chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, which many times we use for our preface, it is sung. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you might pro proclaim the mighty works of him who called you out of darkness into his wondrous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. 
Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Jesus said unto his apostles, but I think it carries over to each and every single one of, one of us. When Jesus says in John chapter 15, verse 16, You have not chosen me, but rather I have chosen you. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, it continues not only with the words of Jesus, but we also read throughout the letters of St. Paul of the rich heritage that God has given unto us. For in Romans chapter 8, verse 15 and 17, Paul writes, You did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit that bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. We are taught that God in, imbues his divine spirit upon the faithful. You know, we also find another heritage in our great American nation, the melting pot of many ethnicities, where we inherit the freedoms and the democracy that our founding fathers established at the beginning of our nation in 1776, and further carried on in the Declaration of Independence. It was in these principles that so many died that we could be free, and we need to cherish this heritage. Today, there are so many who also share a special heritage of being Polish. The history, the language, the customs, and the traditions speak volumes of a nation that sought to be free and proud. On this Heritage Sunday, we encompass so many different heritages. My dear brothers and sisters, may we be grateful for that which we have inherited. I would like also just to spend a couple of moments talking about today's gospel. There are actually two records of Jesus being asked a question about being able to be on his right and on his left. The first is found in today's gospel, and the second is found in the gospel of Matthew, where the mother of James and John asks for this special favor. You know, my brothers and sisters, the whole gospel of Jesus Christ is built upon humility and not pride, but yet, after James and John traveled with Jesus day after day and heard his teachings of humility and being careful not to exhibit pride, we see that toward the end of his ministry, of Jesus going up to Jerusalem for the last time, where Jesus also speaks that he is to be handed over and to be crucified. Yet the apostles, James and John, ask Jesus for this special favor, that when you come to your glory, Lord, that one of us be on your right and one on your left. You know, my brothers and sisters, the gospel of Jesus Christ is one of humility. And so, Jesus throughout his entire life practiced this humility. And it's summed up in the words that I have come not to be served, but rather to serve. And so we as Christians, having a rich heritage of so many different roots into that one tree of life, must ever be cautious that we do not think of ourselves any higher than those that are among us. And so, may we take that example that I have spoken about on several occasions, which to me is the quintessential teachings of humility, where our blessed Lord took off his outer garment and put a towel around himself and proceeded to kneel down and to wash 
the feet of his apostles. He said, do you know what I have done for you? If I, your Lord and Master, of which I am, have knelt down and washed your feet, should you not also wash one another's feet? And so, as people of God, may we ever be mindful of the sacrifice of what Jesus has offered in all humility to serve as an example for each and every single one of us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen.
that the gospel may be established among us, not only in word, but also in power. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Thanks unto the Lord our God. To his right to give thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. You who sent your Son Jesus into our world to dispel the darkness and bring us into eternal light. May we as his disciples follow his teachings and be made humble in heart. So therefore on this Heritage Sunday, we join with the voices of angels, archangels, seraphim and cherubim, and all your holy saints, and repeat thy promise Eternal, holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. This morning, let us offer the Eucharistic prayer number two which is the canon of St. Hippolytus, as found on eight, page 82 of our Mass Service Booklets. We give thanks to you, God our Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom in these last days you have sent us as Savior, Redeemer, and Messenger of your will. He is your Word, inseparable from you. Through him you have made all things, and in him you were well pleased. You sent him from heaven to a virgin's womb. There he dwelt and was made flesh. He was revealed as your son, born through the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin. When he suffered, he fulfilled your will, and gained for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands to free from suffering those who believed in you. When he was betrayed to his freely chosen suffering, thereby to destroy death, to break the chains of darkness, to crush hell beneath his feet, to give light to the just, to make a covenant, and to remember his resurrection. He took bread, he gave you thanks, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. said, This is my blood, which is poured out for you. As often as you do this, do it in memory of me. Calling then his death and resurrection to mind, we offer you the bread and the cup, 
We thank you for allowing us to come before you and to serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church to gather all in unity. Grant to all who partake of these holy mysteries the fullness of the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of their faith in the truth, so that we might praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him may glory and honor be yours with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. And now please turn to page 95. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our and eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, also with you. and now let us offer each other a sign of peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. And now, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This morning, let us pray together the first communion prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. We will take the bread of heaven and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Say the word, and I shall be healed. 
this morning prior to receiving Holy Communion. Let us therefore offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are you who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for you shall be filled. Receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ.
my son feared the Lord and the king. Have nothing to do with those who rebel against them, for suddenly arises the destruction they send and the ruin from either one who can measure. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, O Heavenly Father, through the Eucharist we have received, help us to fill our duties to you and our brothers and sisters. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, descend upon you, my brothers and sisters, and all your loved ones. And may the grace of God be ever within your hearts. Thanks be to God. Let us go forth this day and serve the Lord as his disciples. Thank be to God. Please be seated, which you already are. You know, I apologized um, yesterday as having a little bit of a problem. Um, and so I have to excuse myself from making the pierogi. And you know, there was talk about how there might be some problems with the cheese. And, and so I, again, uh, made a mistake in the bulletin that instead of making the cabbage, we made the cheese yesterday. Uh, we made 85 dozen. I think I might have put 88 dozen. Yeah, Father, I just want to thank everybody that, that worked. We had a good crew yesterday um, and, you know, they trained well. <laughs> and Alice came and did the, so we had, Alice came and did the dough, so we had some of the original people really there and helping and, you know, doing the training and stuff. And it, and I think it went, I think it went very smooth. Um, and at the end of all three, you know, you may, I'll uh, give you the people who, who were there so that you can recognize them in the bulletin Thank rather you. than doing it every week. Um, this coming week, we will be doing potato and cheese. I'm saving the cabbage for the last. I'll, I'll get it right this week. <laughs> um, I do bring to mind a few announcements. Um, Again, every Wednesday we call upon uh, people from our diocese, and it's actually being carried over by many of the other dioceses, to, to take the time to offer in prayer um, intentions for not only the Polish National Catholic Church and its individual parishes, its congregations, but also for the intentions that God would bless all our clergy, also for our, again, for our own special intentions as we remember our brothers and sisters who are sick and ill. Um, Vincent, our, our thoughts go to, to you and to your family over the passing of your mom this past week. Uh, I thank you for calling me and, and uh, the opportunity. I thank you for coming on such short notice. Through the grace of God, we're called to not only love each other, but also to pray and to hold one, to hold each other in times of need. So it's the least I could do, Vincent. Um, I do bring to mind the calendar raffle is going to be coming up in a couple of weeks. And so tickets are, are on sale now. Um, I was surprised talking with Sue last week that the entire month there have been donations that have already been given. So I thank you for that. I know that after this morning's Mass, um, we are going to hold our monthly parish committee meeting. Um, I do bring to mind that a week from this coming Monday, I will be driving um, to Lancaster, um, New York, um, to actually be a part of the National Clergy 
uh, conference. Um, I will be having Father Senior um, Joseph Krushinsky, uh, Father Adam Chodernetsky, and Subdeacon Justin Davio that will all be traveling. It's about a six hour trip, and so it's always good to have a couple of couple of people where the conversations will make the trip a little bit shorter. Um, I also placed in the bulletin, and we'll be talking about in, oh, in the back of the church, is my monthly pastoral report. Uh, please take it with you. Um, I also, in the um, pastoral report, I brought up the thing about the Arabiti trees at our um, cemetery. Um, I received a wonderful email in response to an email I sent Father Jonathan Reardon um, and, and he knows of the difficulties and he informed me that this should be done before the, the cold weather really sets in. And the other thing was just a brief um, announcement that this past week while I was away uh, attending the National uh, Mission and Evangelism uh, Commission conference, I came back and I found a really heavy box on the front porch, and it is our knock lock box uh, that will be installed. Um, and you know, when I first looked at it, I said, we don't have a key. Well, we're not going to get a key, because the only key is actually going to be, once we install it, the uh, South Deerfield Fire Department will be locking that box, and they will have the key. There'll be two keys of which when we refitted the keys, there's only two keys, one for the church proper and one for the rectory to be used in times of emergency. Is there anything else I failed to mention? Peg. The AMS will be selling their uh, calendar for the Thank you, Peg. Like you said, with the USPS, hopefully we'll get it before 2022. I said before, with the, the, the problems with the United States Postal Service, we'll get them before 2022. Uh, again, uh, today, I thank you for coming to church. Uh, let us now offer prayers uh, with the intentions for the sick, the suffering, the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed those suffering from the coronavirus, and pray for not only them, but also their families. Let us be thankful for the blessings of doctors and nurses, first responders and healthcare workers who are still striving daily to help others. Um, also, please, in your prayers, remember all abused and neglected children, all abused and neglected animals, all victims of violence, and most importantly, let us remember each other in prayer and pray for one another and for our loved ones that God's grace might be ever present. Thank you and God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Lord of God, give us sins now and the hour of death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was at the beginning, is now and ever shall be, and will be God and Son. And let us pray for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 